have the pleasure of being joined by Joanna Hayes, Coach Hayes, um, 2004 Olympic gold medalist in the 100 meter hurdles and one of the greatest 100 hurdle, 400 meter hurdle runners <laughs> in history. Um, and of course, super, super successful as a coach. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Oh yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So um, I do just want to, of course, dive into your background a little bit. And I know you were originally born in Pennsylvania and then moved to California. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So I was born in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Um, I have two older siblings and a younger sibling. So it's two girls and two boys. And I was only four yeah. when, when we moved to California. So I don't remember a lot about the East Coast when I was living there, just about when we visit there and yeah. see our family. So we definitely visit there and you know grew up knowing our family, but more consistently in Riverside in California. And yeah. I do remember the drive out. We drove <laughs> from, from Pennsylvania. And actually, we were in New Hampshire when we came here so my little brother was born in New Hampshire wow. and so when he was about one and a half or so we we drove across country in our in our van oh with our God. cat and our, in our New Hampshire, all yeah California. all the way to California <laughs> and so that was um I remember going to the petrified forest and things like wow. that so I mean I was young but I remember little details about about the ride nice and then what was it like growing up in California I think it's in Riverside mm -hmm. that you grew up right yeah what was that like yeah you know it's much different than Riverside is now mm -hmm. um when you go back now it's a lot more built up but um because when we were there we would my dad was a roofer way back then so I remember driving with my dad and my little brother and we would get up super early and yeah. drive down to Palm Springs but there was like nothing there was nothing there it was just yeah. the windmills so all we remember is those big huge windmills but there was like no Marino Valley like none of the the cities that are built up now they weren't there so it was just this long drive of desert um <laughs> and then we just remember the tar smell um and that was you know it's one you know how you have like you know that movie Inside Out like your yeah. core memories that that's a core memory for me um so it's pretty cool but yeah and then then we just the four of us we grew up with um our mom and dad my dad moved to LA when we were when I was six so he became a homeless activist so nice. he was in LA we were in Riverside and so it was mostly my mom and you know it was it was it was it was a good childhood it was not a good childhood it was just a childhood of, like most people have those ups and downs and yeah. you know just the perils of life but um my mom did a really great job and we just you know we we were we were a <laughs> we were a fun little close-knit family um so, so yeah nice nice and during that time when you were growing up um you know when you were young and even getting into you know high school and when you navigated through your career who were some of your role models and people that you looked up to um i looked up to uh i think jackie joanna kersey mm -hmm. and as i started and that was before i then i started doing hurdles yeah. and gail devers and i started out as a youngster and obviously you know flojo was was mm -hmm. the one who was the first person i was like i i want to be her you know <laughs> i just want to be her and i want to be like her. i want to be her yeah. she was just this glamorous just beautiful woman with all this hair and these nails and mm -hmm. i didn't you know i ran track i started running i think when i was around nine yeah. um like age group track and doing things not like the big AAU and okay. things like that, more of like parks and recs. Yeah, and, yeah. and my mom would take me to track meets and help me work out. So <laughs> I had some good coaches and it was just a fun, more, more low key yeah. um, situation. And then when I saw the Olympics, that's when I was like, I was, it was, what was that year? I was 12. So it was 80. I was almost 12, yeah. um, 84 when it, I mean, 88, 88 when, when um, Flo Jo did her yeah. thing. And I was like, I'm going to the Olympics. Um, I didn't know what, what event it was going to be. You just, I knew I was going. I, I would have never imagined it would have been the hurdles. Yeah. It, I just, that was not on my radar. And then I was like a jumper. Um, and so I've, you know, tried lots of different events. But those three, those are like my big three. It started out with Flojo and Jackie. And then it went to Gail yeah. once I realized like who she was. And I heard her story. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And never would I imagine that I would know her the way I do <laughs> yeah. and know Jackie. Like it just, you just don't think as when you're young that you're going to know these people and like have full on conversations and just yeah. spend all this time with them. So it was just great. Once you set a role model out there, once you see someone that you, that you idolize or that you, you know, want to be like, yeah. um, then they're there. Nice. And then you're like, yeah. Oh wow. Like I totally know you <laughs> <laughs> and I can ask you anything and I can see you work out and we like run side by side. Yeah. And so that was, that was huge for me being able to run with them and just be, just be, you know, just watch yeah. how they train and how they work. So it's been great. But overall, like Jackie's been like a huge mentor for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's been great. Nice. And did, I mean, Flojo, Gail, Jackie, did they influence you to go to UCLA? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, but she's, the thing that's funny is like, I didn't really know a lot about, 
like schools and, and track. I just, I was, I don't know, I was not in a bubble, but just we ran. And then like I did like, you know, Arco, Jesse Owens, I did small meets, I traveled. And I, college kind of in my mind came into the picture a little later. Even though my mom was an educator and she was always talking about school and reading. But I, once I was in high school, you know, I watched a lot of basketball. And so I really wanted to go to North Carolina. I wanted to be a Tar Heel more than anything. <laughs> more than anything, I, I, that's what I wanted. And um, that's where I thought I was going to go. Um, but then as the recruiting process started, it was it was UCLA because um, uh, Jeanette Bolden, yeah. my high school coach, Coach Leathers, he coached her in high school. Yeah. But in L.A., it's Compton Centennial. Then he was coaching at Riverside. And so he kind of I was new to her. I hadn't hurdled. I was a jumper yeah. and I was decent, but I wasn't I, I wasn't D1 long jumper and mm-hmm. not at that point. But um, he we started hurdles my junior year, like January of my junior year when I transferred schools. In, uh, um, high school? in high school, wow. my first time over a hurdle. My first two times I fell. It was, it was, it's, <laughs> I didn't run again for months. It was just crazy. Oh but my gosh. then, but, and I was third at the state meet yeah. in the short hurdles and I got last in the long hurdles. So I was still triple jumping and I was running back and forth and it just, it just was too much. <laughs> yeah. And I like hit the first hurdle and I just kind of jogged. It was just ugly. <laughs> but, he, you know, there was a few letters coming, but mm. Coach Leathers told Jeanette, he was like, she's good. She's going to be great. She's new, you know, and so. Coaches called, and I was recruited by several schools, but she was the main one. And, and back then, so we didn't have cell phones. We had landlines. So I waited every week. She called me on that landline. Every oh week we gosh. talked. Once a week. It was a rule. Once a week on a landline. And so I got to know her really well. And so with the combination of her, of my coach introducing me to her and him yeah. knowing her, it was a trust thing. You know, I, I'm very – I'm all about relationships and trust. Yeah. And if he said she was great, I would automatically – I, I went in thinking that about her and she was and she was ama- and she was amazing and then with then getting to know Bobby and then putting it all together with mm-hmm. Bobby and Jackie and, and Flojo <laughs> and, and Gail it was like what this is crazy <laughs> you know I'm learning all this stuff and then you know took my trip got to meet Bobby got stung by a bee um, mm-hmm. it was just my trip wasn't the best <laughs> But it was it was the right place. Um, it was the right place for me at that time with just with Bobby and Jeanette and just being able to be around those iconic women um, yeah. as role models. And they would literally just they'll help me through things. So um, that was definitely the place for me. Um, USC, was, ironically, was my second choice. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> but just the coaching staff and mm-hmm. just that connection I had with Jeanette and with Bobby was 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 everything for me everything. that is amazing i mean you couldn't have it imagined you you were looking up to them yeah. and then you end up working with them like you yeah. said it's like, like, there they were like oh <laughs> yeah, hey yeah. just like hey girl <laughs> <laughs> but so you said that you didn't start hurdles until your junior year of high school which yeah. is kind of crazy because i mean by the, before you went to college you were like the top hurdler in the country in yeah. both hurdles right yeah so like kind of talk to me about um how you managed both right i mean you I guess early in your career, you were maybe leaning towards a 400 hurdles in terms of like maybe your better event. Um, and then, you know, later in your career, your 100 hurdles came about, you know, to be more successful in a sense. Um, talk to me about, you know, getting into the hurdles and, you know, why you kind of navigated and uh, transitioned more to the 100 media hurdles. Yeah. Well, I always liked them more. Yeah. It did, I mean, clearly. <laughs> 100 meters, 400 meters, 300 meters, you know, just want to be a 100 meter hurdler. Mm-hmm. But when I started hurdling, because I was the jumper, and then we started transitioning to the hurdles. Yeah. So we were going to do, you know, we dropped the triple, and then we kept yeah. the long, and my coach was like, it's just too, th- because the 100 hurdles and the long jump in high school were the same time. Yeah, 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 the yeah. 300 hurdles and triple jump around the same time. <laughs> and it was just going to be, and then I had relays. Yeah. It was going to be too much. So we dropped the jumps and focused on the, and, on the hurdles. And, yeah. you know, that was high school. So he, he just trained us, yeah, and I ran, yeah. and it was, you know, it, it was something like indoors. I ran indoors for the first time and I ran and I actually thought I won this race and it was like they leaned and they gave me the little flowers and they were yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. won it. Uh, and then I'm put, taking off our shoes in the car room and they're like, oh, you know, we need those back. You didn't what? win. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I was, <laughs> what <laughs> like is happening? Yeah, what is happening? So, and I, I wanted the photo finish picture and I took it and I put it on my, on my bathroom mirror wow. and I looked at it every day and I was like, this will never happen again <laughs> never and so i made it a point to win all my 100 meter hurdle races by as far as much as i could like yeah, i'm trying to put yeah, every because yeah, you're yeah. not gonna have we're not gonna have to talk anymore we're not gonna have this question <laughs> you're not taking nothing from me yeah. and so i did that and then but um and then you know i doubled with both hurdles and it was just it was a fun combination and it was mm-hmm. much easier in high school um and then getting to college it was the 400 hurdles and yeah. i was like i don't 
I don't want to do this. This is, this is terrible. <laughs> but I had, I mean, I had a decent freshman year. I won the Pac-10s yeah. and the 100 hurdles, and I was second in the 400 hurdles. And not bad. You know, I'm a freshman, but mm-hmm. my, my Bobby didn't see it that way. Bobby was <laughs> like... <laughs> I mean, it's like, no, because he was like, you know, you don't want to, I know you don't want to run these. He had this whole talk. You don't want to oh run these. God. And I know you don't. And da, 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 and da, da, you know, if you know Bob Kersey, you kind of know how this <laughs> conversation was going. But he was like, let me tell you something. Mm. You got to give me what I want in those 400 hurdles. You out there, you ain't trying this and that. He was like, you know, if you what? don't, if you don't, this is going into the next, my sophomore year. If you don't give me what I want in those 400 hurdles, you will not run the 100 hurdles. I did the oh. same thing to Jackie. If Jackie don't give me this effort <laughs> in the hip, she's not long jumping and i was like yeah <laughs> and back then we ha- that was it like yeah, there's yeah, not yeah. like a conversation you're, you're not gonna have that no we, i want to talk to you coach we're gonna have this no it wasn't there was none of that yeah. it was like okay yeah. i want these 100 hurdles so i i dropped two seconds off my time going into uh. the next year and i could do both but it was just like this man is completely crazy <laughs> um but that's what it was and so yeah. the training was it was a lot and i will say i loved training for 400 hurdles like i loved it i didn't like to i didn't want to run them ever but i wanted to train for them Mm. that was and i and i would have this thing where i'm like i'm gonna knock these workouts out i'm not gonna he's not gonna see me sweat like my whole goal was just to demolish his workouts Yeah, 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 yeah and that's how i got through everything that's crazy because most people even just like flat 400 runners are like I'm, I don't want to do this because it's, like, too hard to just train for it. But yeah. you liked the training for 400 hurdles. Yes. That's wild. Yeah. That is wild. That was that was just – then I'm like, oh, I got to go run these. <laughs> <laughs> I never wanted to run them. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Do you think, like – because I, I feel like a lot of hurdlers do do that where they double. Like, think of, like, Queen Harrison or, like, um, even Kenny Harrison, mm-hmm. right? They double in col- high school, college, but then they go pro and they're yeah. just lean towards 100 hurdles. Yeah, I think, and I and I think there is a time to to choose. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you can do both. It's hard to do both in the same year. I yeah, think you yeah, can, yeah, yeah. schedules are very difficult. Um, if you want to do both, you yeah. actually have to be really good at each of them and win, and mm-hmm. then they will change the schedule for you. Got That's it, what I've yeah. learned. You know, they'll if, if you are somebody that proved that I can win the 100 meter hurdle world title or Olympics, yeah. I can win the 400 meter world title or Olympics. They can they'll make adjustments make because it. they want to see can you do the double at true, a championship. True. But right now it's very difficult to do it. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just too much at this level. Yeah. When you're younger, you can do it. But at this level, when people are all focusing on one thing and you're focusing on two, you're splitting your time. It's yeah. very difficult to do. But can it be done? I think so. Yeah. It's just a you have to. It's it's difficult. It's and difficult. everyone yes wants to go to the shorter side. Um, everybody shouldn't always go to the shorter side. I think, but it's what we want. And mm-hmm. I think I had a conversation years ago with Sandra Farmer Patrick yeah. and I asked her I was like maybe I was 20 19 I don't know I was very young mm-hmm. um no I was maybe 22 and like yeah. the world championships in like 99 I think and I was like Sandra um and, she, and I get to talk to all these people growing up like just just having <laughs> like, these conversations she's like hey Sandra, girl Jackie, Sandra yeah like, like what's up <laughs> but I'm just like why do you run the 400 hurdles mm. and she was like it's the one I'm, it's what I'm good at wow. and I was like makes sense right <laughs> that's she it wasn't like i love the i want she's like this is what i'm good at mm-hmm. and if, if we embrace what we're good at yeah. what our natural races or what we can win at we're going to be successful and and then we can grow to love it because yeah. you win you, you like it more yeah, right exactly. obviously if you're losing you hate <laughs> yeah. it um and so i always remembered that and i was like okay and that's that's what she's good at and yeah i was good at both i guess and yeah, my guess, my mean. coach Leathers told me that I was a better foreigner hurdler. Coach mm-hmm. Bobby told me that, and I I just didn't want. To, I was like, no, I wouldn't believe it. And I, cause in my heart, I was a better hundred meter hurdler, and that's the one I wanted to win for different reasons. I think yeah. it just that's the one I wanted. That's the one that for me was going to bring me the most satisfaction and glory. And I was yeah. like, I want this so bad. And I was like, God, I want this. Please help me get this. And and so that's how that's why I chose it because yeah, I just yeah. there was there there was a spark there for me and and because I was just blessed to be able to choose I think if I had run the 400 hurdles more and embraced them more I could have been a lot yeah. better that makes but sense. I wasn't going I wasn't, that makes sense yeah so then when you won well I think 2000 in the 100 meter hurdles you finished fourth at trials in the 400 meter hurdles I got fourth in the 100 meter hurdles I got fifth you got fifth so you were like just off the team in both then 
coming back, of course, 2004, you made the team. I don't think you won trials. At, I, it was, yeah, Gail and I ran the same time, know, like, and she, time, by right? two 1,000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah so I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But then, so then all of that, like, you loving the 100-meter hurdles, and then you, of course, win the Olympic gold. Did, was that, like... I don't know. What did you feel? Was it like a relief? Was it like, oh, I finally did this? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that is, that is exactly what I felt. <laughs> People said, how did you feel? I'm like, I felt relief. Like yeah. I said, I said to myself, like during the whole process of crossing the line, knowing I won and everything, I was like, I can breathe. <laughs> I Like I can finally breathe. Yeah. And that's literally what it was. I mean, all the excitement and happiness was all there, but it was just being able to to take a breath and say, I can actually breathe and nice. not feel like I'm suffocating. I finally did this thing that I have prayed for that yeah. I've worked for that I literal blood sweat and tears for nice. um and it was just it was just the most amazing feeling oh my gosh that, yeah. that is that is amazing and I, I remember I can like you know envision the video of you like I mean maybe you cross the line and maybe you're not sure for a second but then you just like yeah because down. like I threw my hands up I want and then and <laughs> em- almost immediately uh Yelena Krasovska in lane two or one she yeah. threw her hands up and I was like oh <laughs> and I'm thinking here we go I lost how embarrassing. I got my hands in the air and I lost. This is just, I, I vowed for this never to happen. <laughs> what is happening? It kind of threw off my celebration a little yeah. bit because I was like, it kind of didn't had, I had to pause for a minute because yeah. I knew I won and I wasn't sure. And then, you know, it was just, and then seeing it, then Melissa Morrison was like, girl, you won, you won. And I was like, okay. But I was like, I need to see it. Yeah, yeah. And they came up and then the 1237 came up and I had predicted the time yeah. with my friend, Doc Patton. And Wait, so you predicted like that exact time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gosh. Because we would like every day he would, we had like these little phones that they gave us yeah. the Olympics. Um, and it, we, he would text me. It was like, you ready? And then I would text back, damn right. And then that first round, <laughs> second round, you ready? And I was like, damn right. Nice. And the, then the final, he's text, same thing. You ready? And I put damn right. And then I put 12. 12.37 and he texts me back Olympic champ Wait, how <laughs> did you think of like that exact because I can understand like Olympic record or something like that, that was why so uh-huh. Bobby and I were Bobby and I like after the semi after the semi we were driving in the taxi back to the we stayed on this boat mm. not the Queen Mary it was the Sports Illustrated boat across mm. the water from the Queen Mary <laughs> and um, it was so nice but and the people on the boat were so great it was just a great experience <laughs> a great overall experience. they were awesome and he we were talking he was like, and we never talk about records and times yeah. it was just something we bobby just didn't do that it was like you know it, it had to be very specific and a very specific reason to go for a record yeah um he didn't want to like forget have you forget about the the goal of winning and yeah, these kind of, of things course. but he felt i was ready so he was like you know I might as well go for the olympic record and i was like all right <laughs> i was like all right you know yeah, we'll yeah. do it and then i was like in my mind i was like i gotta run at least i gotta run 12 37 yeah and so you know, and my friend Alan Johnson, and see all these people, my good friend Alan, he was, Doc told Alan, he was like, they were talking about before the race, and he was telling me, yeah, she's, and she said she's going to run 12.37. He was like, he's like, yeah, she's, she looks ready, she looks ready, but I don't know about 12.37. Yeah. And then, Alan Johnson. <laughs> Alan Johnson. <laughs> and so then after I, after I ran the time, and everyone knew that I had told Doc, as he told everyone, and we <laughs> talked about it, and they were like, what, what's my time? When am I going to run? Predict my time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is so So it was cool. super fun, though, yeah. That is it was, so cool. Yeah. And then um, just curious, did you have, as you've navigated both, you know, going from high school to college and then even going pro, even more specifically going pro, did you receive like support on how to navigate through the world, whether that's like financial literacy or like just being an adult, right? Like managing agents and contracts and all kinds of things like that. Um, I think mine came pretty organically. It was just I, my agent was Greg Foster. Mm -hmm. So he, Bobby coached him, like they were friends. It was all like a, a familiar family God, type of God, deal God. and so we kind of just I kind of just like was just in it yeah um and I didn't because I came out of college and I didn't have a contract but Bobby had a, a a club a small club that he sponsored us and so we had support there which was helpful um and then I because I didn't even and then I we went through 2000 and I got the fourth and fifth and yeah. I was like I didn't want to I just I was just through I didn't want to yeah, do it anymore yeah. I was like I'm over all of this I hate it I don't want to do track yeah um went to 01 trained for it and then I got hurt yeah. and then you know sometimes if you get hurt you you either you work hard to not be hurt and get out and get back to it or you just I just like I don't even care like I, I rehab and I just it was like whatever I honestly just didn't care wow. and ended up picking a couple years off and so then there was no money there was no like I worked moved to St. Louis mm-hmm. worked at Jackie Joyner Kersey yeah. Center and I and I just worked and so I kind of was thrown right back into it and when I said okay I'm going back to do this again I I was watching world championships and i started thinking you know one i saw world championships so then like you know two i was like i need to get back i saw phoenix sanchez winning i saw tori edwards i'm like oh, these are my peers like they're winning like what's happening so 
went back to it and then I was unattached going into nationals in 03. The oh. first round it said unattached. Second round it said unattached. I looked up final it said like Nike. I was like, what is this happening? So I'm like, Greg, what's going on? I had this like baby contract. <laughs> um, it was a it was a baby baby contract. I still was working, but that changed in 04. Um, got a new contract. Nice. So <laughs> I got a new contract after. There you go. But yeah, it was tough because I was my contract was like nineteen thousand mm. dollars and I had gear and then when I didn't World Championships was awful, I got sick and I didn't even make I got like I was ninth. I didn't yeah, make the yeah, final yeah, yeah. and I got reduced. I'm like, how do you reduce that? Twelve five, I got twelve thousand five hundred dollars and I'm like, I'm That's really crazy. living off of twelve thousand dollars a year, so I worked three jobs. That's because I scary. had to, yeah. And so, and, and from 03 through 04, like, I'm working, 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 but I'm like, I have to eat. I ate, I did everything right because I, ha- I couldn't afford not to. I'm yeah. like, I don't have no money. Yeah. And I told myself, listen, this is your last shot. Like, girl, wow, if you don't get on this great. team, you're done with track. Like, I'm not about to be out here, like, mm-hmm. trying to <laughs> do little meets here. And I'm, that wasn't for me. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. my personality. And, I'm, I, and that's. People can do whatever they want with their life and their career, mm-hmm. and they can grind longer till their 30s if they want. It wasn't going to be me because I was like, I, I, I'm going to get a job. I got a degree. I'm going to yeah, get a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, was, I had resolved on that. And then so I gave myself an ultimatum. Nice. And I and I and, but I was like, I'm not going out without uh, giving it 100 percent. But I'm also not going to say yeah, I'm not going to give myself any outs to say, well, next year for me, there was no next year. And, and that it, it, it worked out. Nice. Um, it worked out. Yeah. I love that. So mm-hmm. just uh, last two questions. You, uh, well, actually first, you thinking of like the 100 meter hurdles now, and I guess it's been like forever where women's 100 meter hurdles is, it's like the world championships, right? It's so hard to make Always. the team, right? Um, and what do you think of the landscape of the 100 meter hurdles over the year? And I don't know, like, why is it so tough of a team to make? Uh, you know, it's tough because first of all, I, I don't know why, but everyone wants to run it. <laughs> And, yeah. and you have to be, you have to have, there has to be a certain amount of crazy in you. Like you cannot, like you just can't think logically <laughs> if you want, if you're a hundred meter hurdler. And I mean, it's like, you can't, you can't like say, I mean, I'm very well put together and I'm just going to run as fast as I can over 10 berries and see what happens. Like it's just, you know, yeah. you, you can't think it through like that. You're like, this is crazy. I just want to do this. And I don't know why we want to do it. It's like, I think it's a thrill. I've always said hurdlers are, it's, you know, it's not personal, but you know, I just feel like hurdlers can do more. Like yeah. we can run fast and we can jump over barriers. You know, we can also hurdle things. But, and I'm like, you can, like walking and chewing gum at the same time. You have yeah. to be able to multitask to be a great hurdler, mm-hmm. especially a short hurdler, because it happens so fast. Yeah. One mistake, as you've seen yeah. plenty of times, times right? takes you completely out. And mm-hmm. I think we've hurdlers of almost all of us have been there. Yeah. We have almost all of us have fallen. We've, I mean, I felt the world championships. It was yeah. horrendous. Um, you've seen Gail. You've, you've seen these things happen. So, you got to have a certain amount of just off the hinges in you. And I just think people, women hurdlers just love to line up. Yeah. They just love to do it. And it's a challenge. You know, it's not just seven or eight women that you're racing. It's, it's 10 berries in front of you. And I always tell people these, you, you can't predict what the women next you're going to do. They're yeah. going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. It's the 10 in front of you that you got to have a problem with the battle with. Cause what one thing, you know, though, they're never going to be in a different place. They're always going to be 8.5 mm-hmm. meters apart, 33 inches, you know, 13 up front, 10.5 mm-hmm. on the back every <laughs> single time. Right. You have to master that. And you have to be, you have to control the hurdles. If you hit them, they will hit you back. <laughs> they, they don't, they don't owe you nothing. They don't, you know, they're mm-hmm. not your friends. You're right. So you, once you master them, then you can worry about racing these women, but it's not like in a hundred or uh, 200 and you can respond and go, you can't respond until you've cleared a hurdle. And we've seen that you try to go and like, Oh shoot. And so the second half, you can't go faster. You just have yeah. to be more technically sound. And that comes with lots and lots of training. If you're injured, you can't train. That was one of my biggest things. I got injured a lot, so I can't train. I get in a race. My rhythm is off. You got to have great rhythm. And so, and that's why, once you master it, you can control it. You can see women just go for years because it's a rhythm once you're yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. But then somebody else finds a rhythm and they want to <laughs> go. And now you're trying to race them. And, and it's, but it's really about training and focus. And once you're laser focused, you can, you can do anything with the, with the hurdles. And I think that's a challenge. Yeah. It's a big challenge. And some of us just aren't as fast as 100-meter sprinters either. Yeah. And some of us want to be – I 100 is great to watch. I don't – I probably couldn't – I just – it's not my thing. But I think in there's that, you know, you want to be a hundred meter sprinter, but you're like, eh, I'm just not fast enough. No, just right big. there, you know. So I think it's not like a Gail Devers who was fast enough yeah. to obviously run the hundred and yeah. the hurdles. So 
you know, it's just it's it's really about mastering and just finding the rhythm and being a really competitive person who can do yeah. two things at once. Um, and the women in the world and specifically U.S., it's just it's it is insane. And yeah. when they line up, people are like who you got? And it's it's difficult to call it. Generally, <laughs> I can call it right. <laughs> but sometimes people will surprise you. Yeah. Um, but I, I love watching through the rounds. I love seeing how what people do. And just I watch all year long yeah, with the hurdlers. Yeah, yeah. And so, I yeah, I'm I'm so excited about this race. Well, I mean, we got I mean, I think it starts tomorrow. Yeah. Right. The yeah. Premiums. Well, if you could pick, I mean, again, this is this year is crazy. Yeah. If you could pick, if you could make a prediction, what would you say for like the women's hundred meter hurdles? <sighs> Is this one you could predict? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, when you look at Camacho, I mean, Jasmine Camacho Quinn is the first yeah. one that comes to your mind just because of just her dominance. And what, what I, I think there's a lot more there yeah. with her. She's still working on things. And I, you know, she still makes mistakes here and there and she still has work and I, she's just so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Nia Ali, like, yeah. I mean, come, like, <laughs> like Nia is, it's like, she's just, she's different. And, yeah. and I had an opportunity to work with her for a year and I saw, and I was like, this lady, oh, she's <laughs> built different. She's always going to be, like, always, she's a true always. vet. She's always going to be there. And then you got a world record. You got Kenny Harrison, like, come on, like, really? <laughs> she's gone 12, 20. She's the fastest one that's in, in the field overall with her PR. And she, you know, she's, and she's had some ups and downs. Yeah. She, she'll make a mistake. And if, with Kenny, if she got to get out with you, um, and you, she's got to get out in front of you. And she's out in front of you, she's gone. It's over. Right? So <laughs> Kenny gets a great start and gets out. And she's ahead by like seven. It's a done deal. Mm. You know? And But then you have, like, you have newcomers. Right? I mean, you know, Alicia Johnson, which I saw her run in high school. Not high school. College. Yeah. So I know she's there. I mean, I'm like, this year she just exploded. And sometimes when we explode on the scene, the whole year is ours. Mm. So you can't count her out. I mean, it's just... Man, <laughs> you know, it's like it's, it's but I mean, I look at those, I look at that group, and mm. I don't know if I'm missing anyone, but um, yeah, it's I just you know, yeah. it can go, it really can go anyway, yeah. and so it's it's super, it's super exciting to be able to see it. So, um, you know, I'm excited, exciting, it should be exciting. I won't make yeah. you pick a, a top three, I won't put you on the record for anything. Well, I gave you four people that yes. I think will be in the top four. There's, I gave you top four in yes, some yes, order. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I mean, and you never, I mean, you, got, you just never know what people are capable of mm -hmm. when they get to a championship. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so I'm, you know, I may have left people out and, you know, that's just because, you know, when I'm talking on the spot, I don't even know if I'm left anyone out that. Uh, I mean, you have like Toby Amusan. Oh, Toby. Nigeria, yeah. Oh, right? she's, uh, see, Toby. She's another one. She's she to is. And then she, even, um, she, um, Aaliyah Armstrong. Yeah. And, right? and, and so Toby. She's she's been to several championships. Yes, she's yes, due yes. for she's due. Yeah, she's, she's due for something. So times, she's think. due. So if she, if Toby gets, if Toby gets a good lane and she's able to just roll with, she's got a shot too. Mm. And I think Aaliyah Armstrong, she's just had an incredible year. Yeah. The only thing of you know, she's a collegiate, and yeah. sometimes with collegiates, you just wonder how long can they go through the exactly, year. We see exactly. it when it yeah. happens. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's incredible. She's young. I think I feel like she's got a lot of focus in her, yeah. but she's really young. I wouldn't. I I wouldn't be surprised to see four Americans in the final. Yeah. Um. I mean, very. Yeah. yeah. Very and yeah, if we're lucky. You'll, you'll see four Americans. You'll see those four. Then you'll you'll have Camacho. You have Toby, and um. I think Brittany Anderson. She's is that yeah. Brittany she's Anderson, she's yes, young, yes, yes. but she she can slide in. So I just. Yeah, <laughs> you just named the entire. Field. Yeah, it's, it's like, like it just it, it just <laughs> and then now I'm thinking I'm like they're coming like who else is out there you know so it's just <laughs> been fun to watch and once the first round goes you kind of get a sense of okay and and it's hurdles yeah. anything can happen favorites don't always it's true like you you know, said. the hurdles get in the way <laughs> you, you, know, <laughs> you hit a hurdle that's that's it that and that can be race, it I mean yeah. but Camacho hit a hurdle in the Olympics and she hit it with her lead and she stepped on it and she just stood up and took yeah, the next true. one she would have run she ran 12 12 37 I want to say in, yeah, 30, yeah. in, the, in the final in but the she final, was yeah. she came off a 12 2 in the semi there wasn't even 24 hours recovery but that's yeah. another story but she would have run in the 20s had she not hit that hurdle but because she's so dominant and strong mm -hmm. she just ran through that amazing
amazing. So yeah, it'll be exciting. It'll yeah. definitely be exciting. Um, last question because I, I know I saw Coach Watts. Um, just you coaching now. You coach at USC, and you've been at USC for a little bit. I think starting as like volunteer, and now you. Well, I started. I started on staff in yeah. 2016, and then I was a volunteer, and then back on staff. Got you, got you, got you. So what has that experience been like? I mean, you were, of course, you ran, but you were like breaking down the hurdles just now. Like, how has it been coaching athletes as opposed to being an athlete? Oh my gosh, I. I love it and I hate it. I'm just gonna. I, <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. I, I be and I'll go with why I hate it because mm. it's the nerves are. I'm just. Yes. I've always. I was a nervous athlete yeah. and I'm a nervous coach and not. And just because I want them to do so well. No, like no, you were telling me after right. Yeah. Right, super nervous. I just want them to do well and because everything that they feel, I feel it. And then you have to feel it multiple times. The college meet. <laughs> NCAA's is stressful. Like one to the next. Okay, next. Okay, I warm this person up. This person got to go. What do they do? Oh, you feel you feel oh. ah. Yeah. You know, and it's like you're up and you're oh. So then someone does great. You're happy. Then someone doesn't do great. You're like oh. And then you got to figure out. Okay, I got to talk to this one over here, and then mm -hmm. separately from that one because one's ha you know. And I'm like, dang, coaches had to do this for years. Like you get one person on the team, but one person like gets fourth. You're like. Okay, I got to have two separate conversations in <laughs> yeah, totally separate yeah. moods. I can't cry with them, but I got to, you <laughs> yeah. know, I have to have that empathy for them. And I have to, but I can't take away the excitement that the other person feels. Yeah. So I got to be excited for them. So it's just a roller coaster of emotions is the part that I don't like. <laughs> but the love of it yeah. is so worth it. Like I would do it a million times over. Um, it's just being able to like be a part of someone's success, not taking credit for their success ever because they're not going to win just because you're a great coach. Mm. They're not, they're going to admit they're going to do maybe better because they're doing things different. They're learning technically yeah. better and getting in shape and all that. But you're not, you don't have a, an NCAA champion or a world champion or Olympic champion. that doesn't have good DNA. Yeah. It's you true. know, watch night. We talk about that all the time. <laughs> it's your DNA. And listen, this, <laughs> don't, go thank your parents, yeah. you know, for this, because we're just trying to elevate you from who you already are mm -hmm. and and that's the best part of it because i can challenge them to be a greater version of yeah. themselves you know we've got some really phenomenal athletes and it's just fun to see them be able to like with when when jasmine jones was second this year at the ncaa's it was kind of like she won she had you know got hurt the year before she didn't make the final and she fell indoors didn't make the final outdoor NCs and then her, pulled her hamstring going over the first hurdle at Olympic trials. Then she fell again indoors yeah, this year. Yeah, it was like, year. oh my gosh. <laughs> and when she looked at me, her face, I, want, I wanted to cry wow. at indoor. It was like, she was like, what? You know, and so we just worked and we worked and she had a knee, just issues. It hurt her knee of so many things. And just getting her out there to that line and watching her go fight for that was like, was like winning. Yeah. Same thing with Rye this year. Yeah. That silver medal this year was way different than last year. Yeah, when you course. he ran his best, I mean, outside of this world and got silver. Mm -hmm. And that's something that takes a while to, to put in perspective, right? And then you, you're you okay. But it was rough. Yeah. This year, it was like, are we going to run? You going yeah, to be able to run? Right. He had the option because his leg was hurting. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just tendonitis. It's more like tendinosis where, like, there's damage up there. There was pain every mm -hmm. time he lifted his leg up. And so... He nobody would have said anything if he decided not to finish the year. Yeah. Nobody would have said, "Oh, you are a quitter. You're 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 soft." No one. But he was like, "I'm I'm gonna do this. What by any means necessary." So my nerves for that <laughs> race were heightened because I knew, and he was in lane three. Ooh. If he wasn't in lane three, I think he'd have probably ran forty six five or, or better because yeah, that yeah, effort yeah. was at least that fast. Yeah. But it's just. Yeah, it's hard. He's it's so much how tall he is trying to negotiate, yeah. right? And he, so he had to work harder to get out of the first turn, had to work harder in the second turn. Yeah. And so he, he would have run faster. But my, my nerves were, is he going to make this around? around? Because every time he hurt, it's going to hurt so bad. And he knew it was going to hurt. I knew it was going to hurt. Watts, we all knew it was going to hurt. Mm -hmm. And my thing was just like, it was more of a mother, like, yeah. it's going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I you love know, that though. It's I gonna love that. hurt. I don't want it to hurt. And then I didn't want him to like not and he knew he was gonna meddle, you know, but it's like it's gonna hurt. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so it was that was the hardest part, but just seeing him be so happy with the silver and then being so happy for Trevor, genuine yeah. happiness. Mm -hmm. It's at that moment, it's not about the athlete and the accomplishments, it's just about the person. Mm. that he is and that's what that's the best part of coaching yeah the that people so that you coach 
not the uh, the accomplishments. They're going to get them whether they go with you or another coach generally. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, most times when they're this good, <laughs> like a lot of people said, can coach DNA them. Is, yeah, is everybody cool can't that. coach them because everybody thinks they can coach the athletes that you coach because mm-hmm. well, I would be doing this or I would be doing that. Also, you don't know them. So you don't know why we haven't done that or what, what we're working on Very and true. it's not coming together yet or whatever hurts or they got this or that. So I'm also very careful about judging what athletes do because you mm-hmm. just don't know what's going on behind the scenes because you don't know the athlete and you don't know the coach. Yeah, very true. So for me, it's just all about the individual that steps on that track and, and who they are yeah. when they go in to the meet and when they come out of it. And if they're that same person, then you're winning. Hey, I love winning. that. I love that. That's so amazing to hear. I, I could feel like the love, of course, when you competed and then now as a coach. Yeah. Even the ups and downs, it, you're, that motherly love is there. Which it's is so it's there. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's hard. <laughs> but I also feel like if you don't care genuinely about the people you're coaching, mm-hmm. they know. Of course. They know. And, and some people, it's a business, so it's okay. And it is a business. Mm-hmm. But there's still the side because it's an everyday relationship. Yeah. I don't see you nine to five. Yeah. And I, I talk to you all the time. Like it's, it's personal. So mm-hmm. it is very personal and you have to keep it personal, but you also have to have the balance of when coach, when athletes want to change schools or when they want to change coaches, you can't take that personal because if it's not working on the track, it's okay. And when, when, when you're, when you don't have that athlete, you still have a relationship with them. That's important. You don't want to burn bridges with people because it didn't work out yeah. athletically. It's, it's a relationship and everybody's not compatible. Very true. So, right. yeah. Well, Joanna Hayes, thank you so much. This is amazing just to learn so much about you. Again, you are one of the most accomplished athletes well, in our sport. Okay. <laughs> I do. I did okay. I, you know, uh, you're being way too humble. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I think that there was, it, I, Thank you. <laughs> Thank no, you. No, no. Just being Thank able you. to learn yeah, and, uh, appreciate and to it. share your story is like really, really dope. So. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was great talking to you Absolutely. and yeah, I enjoyed it. It was I, I could talk about track and hurdles all day long. <laughs> I love it. Well, you'll have a lot to talk about with when we watch the hundred meter hurdles. And even tonight we had the four hundred meter hurdles. So we'll oh see my that don't even get me started on that. <laughs> yes. That was that was you're gonna you're gonna see something very special. I believe, I this believe is, it. Don't be surprised if you see a fifty point. <laughs> <laughs> We might, yeah, we might see a time that could be run in the that will be run in the, the 400, 400, right? And I think you got some incredible women lining up tonight, and it's going to be. I think this this is probably going to be one of the most dynamic and incredible women's 400 hurdle finals yeah. in history. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be across the board. I think yeah. it's going to be amazing. So I'm excited to watch it, <laughs> but I got to watch my first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's going to come before. It. Yeah. So, and don't get cheered. Well, I know you'll be. I'm a bit nervous for Mike. You know, I just I want him to win so bad. You know, yes, but yes, that's yeah. Course. You just you always want them to win. So I'm I'm excited. Can't wait. Hey, yeah. Jonah Hayes, thank you so. Much. My pleasure. Really thank you. Thank you.